and such a glorious theatre. Huge, but glorious. We've got, well, I've, I, I've produced a lot of shows here, and, and one of the most wonderful things about a Brisbane audience is that they, that, that they do come to the theatre, and they're so appreciative of it. And also, you know, we've had our second preview last night, and complete standing ovations, which was wonderful. I know, I know. It's so, really, good but, morning. But, but, but tell me, Julie, um, how do you feel about coming back to Brisbane, putting this company back together? Because we've had like a four-month hiatus. Yes. And we, we, we open the year next Sunday night. Uh, then we go on to Melbourne and then all around Australia. So coming back to go through another rehearsal period with this wonderful cast that we have, how, how's that been for you? Well, it's, it's been wonderful. First of all, this company is so magnificent and they feel almost like, well, they are a second family to me. We, we bonded in, in Sydney and during all those difficult days of putting mm. it together. And now we're just fine tuning and polishing and welcoming Charlie mm -hmm. and, uh, and some new boys, just a few new boys, six new boys, I believe. And uh, coming to Brisbane is pretty special. This glorious theater, as I said, I want to thank uh, John Kotsis too and his wonderful staff for inviting us. Uh, they've been so warm and welcoming to us. We've wanted for nothing, believe me, including goodies and cakes and all tea those and brothers and yeah. all of that. And, and Julie, when, when we were in Sydney, what, what was wonderful was that we were the most, this is a producer talking now, uh -huh. but we were the most successful attraction ever in those theatres since it was built in the 70s, which was wonderful. You know, we had full houses every night and it was just wonderful. And I think it was that thing of the opera house at the time, I think the show and certainly your presence and the cast that we had because we put together such an extraordinary cast of Australian talent and international talent too at the same time. Well, it's a phenomenal show anyway. You've long wanted to do this. I uh, show, haven't you? Yeah, I have. And I think since probably the age of nine years old, when my mother went to Melbourne at Her Majesty's Theatre in Melbourne and saw the original 1959 J.C. Williamson production, and I remember her bringing back the souvenir program, and at nine, going through the photographs, going, oh, God, one day if I ever get an opportunity to be a producer or be a part of this wonderful industry that we all work in, I'd love to be involved with it. Well, it's now come true. you've done. Now, yeah. now we've done it. We've all done. Um, but what have, you, what have you enjoyed most about uh, directing this production of My Fair Lady? And of course, you know, 61 years ago yesterday, it opened on Broadway. Oh my God. And, and you worked with the great master himself, Moss Hart. Yes, and, and Rex, and, and Alan J. Lerner, and Fred, all the original creators. Um, well, um, Coming back to it after all this time is to rediscover the wonder of the show. It is one of the great Broadway musicals, pieces of, of great work. And it's for so many reasons. Brilliant script by George Bernard Shaw, which was the foundation of the piece. Who would have thought that a story about a professor of phonetics would, would result in it being probably one of the great shows ever for musical theatre. It's an odd, seemingly odd subject, but the class differences between the poor and the rich, the, there is so much in the script to mine and to plumb, and um, I've just had the joy of, of recreating it as it was originally so that you could see the way it really, really was. was. And also finding some new things, freshening certain looks occasionally, or um, a take on a, a line maybe, something like that. Oh, we have a glorious car in this production. That's right. Which was scheduled for our original production and was scrapped for budget reasons, I believe, in our original. So I'd never, never seen the car until this production. And I thought about it for a while and I thought, well, let's try it. And it's great. Wait till you see it. And I think also what, what, what has been so exciting about putting this project together is that we 
wanted to create the Broadway 1956 production down to the last sequin. Yes. And, and John David Ridge, who has recreated all of Cecil Beaton's designs, mm -hmm. and certainly uh, Rosario Sinisi, who's recreated the Oliver, Oliver Smith set design. inherited all yeah. those brilliant, brilliant uh, works. works. And, and they're, all, they're yeah. all here, um, 60 odd years later. Uh, fresh, pristine, and you can really tell that when My Fair Lady first opened in New York and in Australia, why it was the Phantom of the Opera at the time. It was the first of the big event musicals uh, since the Second World War, or after the Second World War in 1956. Yeah. So it is, uh, and I think that's what's sort of kept it fresh all these years. That and, and it was the peak of the great golden era of Broadway. There were so many phenomenal shows at the time. Luckily, we were, uh, at that time, one of the best. I, I truly feel that, not just in a boastful way. It, you knew that you were in a glorious show. It has everything. Mm. You know, glorious costumes and scenery. And you see the class difference between upper and lower class and all of that. You feel it. That's right, and I think that's that's one of the reasons why a lot of people come back and see it again, again and again. Mm -hmm. We've had some great repeat business, and, and which is terrific. But but also, you know, talking about our Henry Higgins, who you've all just met, um, Charles Edwards and that, yeah, a lot of our people here will be familiar because, he, of course, he was one of the major stars in Downton Abbey. Yeah. Were you ever, did you ever watch any of that oh, at all? Are you kidding? <laughs> you bet. I binge watched, and I still do. Uh, well, I've seen it several times, I guess. Um, and tell me, with, with Charles, or Charlie as we call him. Yes, yeah. we do, and he likes that. He does like it. Um, and you, you, you had worked with Rex Harris, and then you'd worked with three or four other Higgins over the, those years in yes, London and, and, and New York. And new others, too. That took yeah. over. How do you find the playing and directing different interpretations of the role? And do you think that Charles is going to sort of bring us something a little different? I think he will indeed. Um, it's, you know, Shaw's very much like Shakespeare. It's almost as if he were next generation Shakespeare. It could be, could be considered that. Um, and there's just so much to mine in the role, and every Higgins has brought something new to the role and something fresh. And I think Charlie, as you see, looks delicious. He plays it a little younger, a little, little more um, boyish, a little more um, wicked, and it's perfectly fine. It's a, it's a lovely interpretation of Higgins. And you do wonder whether, uh, even though it would not have been possible in those days, you do you do speculate as to what the relationship with Eliza might uh, be going toward. That's right. And, and if, if you go back to last July when we started casting this show in Sydney and around the country, how hard it was to find Wasn't what we thought... was here before? Last oh, year we began right, rehearsing right, and we passed the year before are, that. We've right. been at it a long time. time. And Eliza was the hardest role to cast, wasn't it, for all of us? Yes, and the last. Then the last role, yes. correct. Because I felt until we had all the rest of the cast in place, I couldn't put Eliza exactly the right Eliza where she should be. And, and the wonder is that we found the most beautiful Australian girl mm -hmm. to play Eliza, and she could not be more perfect. In casting that role, it is very difficult. It is probably, I'm trying to think, maybe West Side Story for different reasons, something like Sweeney Todd maybe for operatic reasons, or I'm not sure, but there is so much to do for Eliza vocally. She really carries the whole show, so you need a girl with a beautiful voice and a very strong voice that isn't going to cave within the first week or two, and uh, I had to learn that pretty fast. And and Anna has a voice that's just gorgeous, and I do so admire it, and her top range is phenomenal. And she's exactly right, and she's a wonderful actress, so we really got very fortunate. Mm. And uh, I remember during rehearsing in Sydney that you, you would leave the rehearsal room at six or seven at night, then go home and do a lot of sort of post-production work on your new television series. Yes. <laughs> uh, Julie's Green Room for Netflix. Yep. Um, Tell us about that. Would you believe uh, our little 
uh, television series for Netflix, which is for children, uh, opens on the 17th. That's tomorrow. Yeah, right? that's right. Yes. Um, and it's a little series for young children, <clears throat> um, which is continuing my passion for the arts and bringing the arts at the youngest possible age to little kids. It's a very family-oriented show. Um, the, the basic age for children is between about four and eight, but I'm hoping that grandparents and parents uh, will come and sit and watch it too for many reasons. Some may be interested with their kids, some may be curious, some may be uh, starting it just for the fun of it and then become involved. But I'm very proud of it. It's not been done before that you focus completely with humor, with love and delight, uh, on the arts for very little children. You're really breeding the, the audience of the future, if you're lucky. And, and you know, that's no different, certainly in this country. Uh, sport, as you know, is a very big thing. And, 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 and kids are taught football that this, you know. So why not yeah, the arts? Why not the arts, yeah. without a doubt. And, and it's always, as everybody knows, particularly, uh, you guys out there, you know that the arts is the first thing mm. that's uh, reduced in terms of budgets and schools and programs, and it's mind-boggling to me and also to my daughter, with whom I worked on on, on uh, Julie's Good and Woman. Uh, it's amazing to me that it would be one of the first things to go because it is the biggest bridge builder of all. Of all, it can it can cross any culture. It can communicate with anyone through the, you can through the arts, and why that would be the first thing to be cut, I'm, it also breeds a much lovelier human being in every way, a more intelligent one. Correct, and, yeah. yeah. So, so in closing, just going back to Fair Lady, well, you know, after 61 years, it's birthday yesterday, and, and now for you to do the full circle and, and being one of the last people around to hand that on yes. to another generation is, yes. is wonderful. And I think yes. this was one of the, the exciting things for me as producer was that, that this production was lost forever and it was only because of yourself and our creative team that have put this back together for a new generation and for years to come because basically People had either died or all that information was scattered into museums yeah, around the world. Had, now it's sense together. Had evolved into other things, and budgets had uh, changed, and people couldn't afford the expense. And this show shows every penny that you, my love, Thank spent you. on it, and it, it's it's worth it. And uh, I hope I hope we're packed all the way home because. Oh. You deserve it. Thank you very much. Bringing it back. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I, I think our friends at Opera Australia and ourselves at the Gordon Frost Organisation, it's been a, 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 a jewel in our careers. I can certainly say that for Alex and myself. It's affected us all. It yeah. has. And, and I hope it's done the same to you. Yes, it has. And it's been a great, great pleasure. I've been to Australia before. And the work ethic with the team, my family mm -hmm. backstage, and I'm not just mentioning the cast, I'm talking about crew and, and sound and lighting. It is such dedication that I find here. It is a joy to find this kind of true collaboration, which is what theatre obviously should be about. Yes, and I, I think with our cast, you know, the wonderful Robin Nevin, Deidre Rubenstein, yes. Tony Llewellyn Jones, yeah. and of course, Reg, Reg Livermore. You know, oh my God. Got the I don't know if any of you have seen the show yet, but please come and see us, because you're watching consummate performers doing the most lovely uh, uh, roles and the most wonderful performances in those roles. That's right. And They're young, all so great. And, and young Mark Vincent who just sings the roof off uh, on the street, on the street where, where you live. live. Yeah. So. I mean, you, I just sort of uh, swim in that nice yes. voice. Yeah. Well, Anna's too, I have mm. to say. But there's so much to enjoy. Come see us. Yep. Thank you very much, Julie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you ladies and gentlemen.